If you're meeting me for the first time, huh? What have you been all these years? Anyway, this video is very simple, straight to the point. It's about Archbishop Duncan Williams. I know, I know, I have made a couple of videos recently that is not settling well for a lot of you. But of course, we have a very wonderful community right here. We can always agree and disagree, but still be friends, all right? So today I came across a video that I think is a lie against the person of Archbishop Duncan Williams. Nicholas Duncan Williams. I had the privilege to be a part of the opening of the Potter's House, and I remember it clearly. And Bishop, Archbishop Duncan Williams was asked to pray the dedicational prayer. When he opened his mouth, and began to pray, the potter's house began to shake with the fragrance of the anointing. He prayed, call the spirit of Astaroth and other names I didn't even know was in the Bible until I started reading it. Wow, you can't make things like this up. A Christian pastor dedicates a Christian ministry to the spirit of Ashtoreth and other spirits? If you're familiar with Ashtaroth, she was a goddess of sexual perversions and fertility. It was the same idol or demon that King Solomon worshipped, and as a result, God took away his kingdom. Now I think that those that are peddling this particular accusation or something really, really might be getting it wrong because it does not in any way make sense. Now I want to play for you the full video, not like full video, full video, of what led to that particular comment because I had to do my research on it to really find out if that really happened. It is the private consecration of a man's life that reveals the public declaration and the anointing of his life. I had the privilege to be a part of the opening of the Potter's House and I remember it clearly. I was asked to read to give the official with all the senates and everyone to read the New Testament reading for the official opening of the potter's house. And I remember Colin Pearson was doing Old Testament and Bishop Noel Jones moderated. And Bishop, Archbishop Duncan Williams was asked to pray the dedicational prayer. When he opened his mouth and began to pray, the potter's house began to shake with the fragrance of the anointing. I only heard prayers like that when I was growing up. He prayed, call the spirit of Astaroth, call the spirit of Astaroth, call the spirit of Astaroth. Other names I didn't even know was in the Bible until I started reading it. All the senators and all the people, we were trying to be dignified. They had what you call high church that day. Bishop brought in the art orchestras and strings and it was supposed to be all prim and proper. But when he finished praying, we shouted for about an hour. Now note there he said he called on the spirit of Astra. Please note that right now, okay? As we continue. We could care less who was there, what Senate was there, and the anointing came in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so blessed to have him tonight. He's in great demand. God is on his life. He has been a spiritual impartation to me, and I love him and I always will love him. Ruach Ministries and friends, put your hands together for Archbishop Nicholas. William! Now I want you to note something, my wonderful viewers, right now, okay? I'm going to show you another example of a situation like this where Archbishop Duncan Williams was introduced. Now, he was listening to what the young man was saying. Probably he did not even remember what happened on that day. But hold on, you watching me right now? Because I'm going to play you the video of what happened that day. The full prayer he prayed that day. And you get to know that sometimes... 
people are just hyped before they come on stage. That was him introducing the person of Archbishop Duncan Williams. But if it meant what the man himself was saying, or as he's been played in the video I showed you before now, think for yourself as a Christian, as someone that has at least some level of intelligence, would you be there and someone saying that you were invoking the spirit of Asterius or you were dedicating the church to a particular goddess and you will come on stage and then continue preaching like this, like he's going to do right now for a couple of seconds before I show you the main video of what happened? Wouldn't you come and then refute that or correct it or something? That is because everyone understands that him calling on that particular goddess if it have actually happened because you're going to see the real video right now was more of like a rebuke not like an invocation let's go on hallelujah Before you are seated, I receive every one of those kind words of Bishop and the clap offerings and the standing ovations for he who alone is worthy of our praise, Jesus, the Son of the living God. We give him all the praise and the glory. And I want to thank Bishop for his kind words. That is it. I don't want to spend too much of your time. I would have played the entire video. It's like almost, like you can see right there, almost an hour long. Now, let me play the video of him praying on that day. You don't even get to hear that particular spirit of um, asteroids being even mentioned by him. Please take your time to listen. On this platform, it is facts over whatever sentiment you have if you don't like truth right here please unsubscribe stop watching me and move on dreams and visions join hearts join giftings and mantles and anointings and callings join together on this holy ground to consecrate these holy grounds to consecrate and to set apart this house, the poorest house, not as another church, not as another building, for gathering and for spiritual indulgence. But we come from every tongue and tribe, kindling, and nation and people, from the face of the earth, we have come from distance shores. We have come by air, we have come by land, and some have come by water to be gathered in this place for this historic event. We are not just consecrating a building, but we are consecrating a revival center. We are consecrating a place out of it shall go forth the end time anointings and end time commissions and end time revival. Oh, thou that answers prayer, how your ears are turned and hearken. We do petition and we do pray and we do intercede in this consecration prayer that out of these grounds shall go forth from the loins of the said man of this house apostles for the end time anointings prophets for the end time revival pastors for the end time revival teachers for the end time revival evangelists for the end time revival let them come forth out of the loins of this house that will shake nations and will change our world to show to the principalities and the powers and the thrones and the dominions of our days that God has a breed and a people and a remnant in the land that cannot be 
this time. So we consecrate the sad man of this house, the first lady, your man servant, Bishop Thomas D. Jakes, that out of the abundance of his heart shall come forth end times mysteries that will scatter in confusion the wisdom tables of the enemy open up new gates of rivers out of the rivers within him lord we have heard deaths but bring fresh deaths out of your mind as we consecrate these grounds we consecrate this place today that it shall be exalted above all the hills of the mountains of the Lord upon the nations of the earth. Let his voice and the voice of his house become a prophetic voice. Everybody lift up your hands, please. Let this place become a prophetic house and a prophetic voice that out of this place shall go forth the law and the prophetic word to give directions to political leaders and to the nations of our world. We consecrate this house for sign. We consecrate this house for miracles. We consecrate this house for wonders. Make this house a wonder, a sign and a miracle to our world. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hey! Let the heavens lift up themselves now. Let mantle fall. Let me and all in as never before. Jesus. Jesus. Do it now. Keep your hands up, please. Keep it up. Don't put it down. Keep it up. And now. We stand by that which was determined in eternity in the archives before time to declare the prophetic word. Now, Satan, hear ye the word of the Lord. It is written to subvert a man in his course, appointed by heaven. The Lord permitted it not. The Lord approved it not. And therefore we declare that there shall be no sabotaging nor subverting of the man of this house in his course. He will run his race. He will finish his course. In the name of he who died and laid in the grave and arose, triumphant on the third day. We speak finally into play Idis. We speak to the oracles of Aturos. To the decisions of Orion and Mazarot, to the zodiacs, and we declare, get yourself and be broken in pieces. Assemble yourself from the east, north, south, and west, and be broken in pieces. Take your counsels in the regions of the sea, and it shall come to naught. Speak your word against this house, and it shall not stand, for God is with us. Shine with a shout of fire. So the person that made that statement that mentioned this particular God, which if you read through scriptures, I'm putting the scriptures right now on your screen. Some people come in the comment and say, "What well, you talk and you don't talk. Me, I am, not, I am not here to preach to you. Do you understand? Okay, I'm an analyst. For me to come and look at this particular issue right now and see that there's a, there's a false accusation on the person of Duncan Williams, do I need to open the scriptures to show you that it's a false accusation? Now, the way the person was talking about it, do you think that he was saying that that particular church was dedicated to that particular goddess? Do you really think so? Or was he talking in the sense that Considering the person of Archbishop Duncan Williams and how he's been known as this man of strategic prayer and all that, that he was talking about the fact that maybe I am saying, even though he didn't use that particular term, that he was rebuking this particular God or 
instead of it being that he was dedicating that particular church to that particular goddess. Think about it for a moment. If you yourself, let's assume, if you yourself were there, because you could see Archbishop Duncan Williams taking over the mic from that person to preach in that church years ago, not today, years ago. I'm going to play some of the sermons, what he preached there. If you were the one taking over the mic and someone is saying that he dedicated a particular church to a particular goddess, wouldn't you take over the mic and then rebuke that particular statement immediately? Think about that for a moment. Let, let that sink to your mind. If you were the owner of a church and then someone is dedicating your church to a particular goddess, think about it for a moment. Does it even make sense? But from what I'm looking at right here, listen to Archbishop Dr. Williams talk about the same incident himself and how the position he was around that time for him to be invited by T.D. Jakes to dedicate that particular Potter's house or whatever, Potter's house to dedicate that particular church. When Bishop T.D. Jakes invited me to dedicate the Potter's house, that was the most difficult time in my life. As a matter of fact, it was a time in my life. At that time, I was contemplating suicide. Suicide, I'm sorry. Suicide. The thoughts were coming and I realized later on that it was a spirit that was assigned to mentally bombard me to give up living. And when he invited me, I was dealing with so much shame, so much shame and rejection that I decided I wasn't going to honor the invitation because it was going to open me up to too many questionings and things. And later on, I took all of myself and I said, no, I'll do it. As soon as I said yes, people started calling to the potter's house and saying, you can't have him. Do you know what is going on in his life? So Bishop Jakes called me and said, what's going on? And I said, why? He said, we're having too many calls coming in here. Everybody is talking about you and all that was. And I said, the same thing I've told you. It's nothing new. He's the same old devil. The devil is fighting me and I'm also fighting him. And he's angry with me. So it's the same thing I've told you. There's nothing new. And he said, okay, that's fine. But it opened me up to all kinds of contradictions. And people were angry that in the mix of my shame and what they call defeat in my life, I was invited to do such an honorable thing. Sitting there was the vice president of the United States. And every big shot in the Christian community was sitting there. And when they called me to dedicate the Potter's house, ah, when I took the microphone, I said, Lord, many are there that have written me off. And I've said there is no hope for me and that I am finished. They said politically, financially, religiously, I'm finished. There is no hope for me. But thou, Lord, have a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. And when I took the microphone, somebody stood up inside of me. Kadu Bahasa, Elemu Katala. Dayanda kuwa la hasi Mei Kidaba hadakusa And that Prayer Was about seven minutes And that opened America up for me Now some of you are going to say Yes, T.D. Jakes is this He's LGBTQ this As become Dr. Williams is this it, There are a lot of things that are also That sound a little bit Am I going to pull it very, very untrue to believe, like this particular fact right now, where Juanita Bynum, with her controversies and all that around her, back in the day said that Archbishop Duncan William raised the dead. Listen to this yourself. This next man of God that's going to be ministering in our women's revival has spent about three or four weeks in our prayer, and we want to use this last 35, 40 minutes to give to who I consider 
to be an apostle of prayer. He's known for prayer. He's known for the Lord using him in levels and operations and raising the dead and open up. And I'm not talking about I heard raising the dead, opening up blinded eyes, unstopped ears. Let's hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the prophet in this hour. Bishop Duncan Williams. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, prophetess. I used to ask your brother Tom and your mom anytime I visited Tom and preached for him in Chicago uh, for many years. And I said, what is the secret of your sister's anointing? And uh, he said, mama prays and girlfriend prays. Do I need to use scriptures for me to show you facts of this person said this, this person said this? This is the shimsei himsei kind of situation right here. Do I have to use scriptures to say, to prove that this, what this person said is correct or not when you are hearing the person's voice yourself? What is wrong with some of you people? Some of you still don't know where you are. But back to the conversation. You hear him rather talk about the whole idea of what happened, the state he was. You know, he's someone that, you know, he's divorced and all of those kind of things. And I don't know what issue he was having at that time, but it must be years ago. So if you look at the situation right now, would you, even based on the situation you are, go to, go, to, go to dedicate a particular place and be dedicating that place to a goddess? Isn't that already controversial? Like, isn't that something even, isn't that controversial enough? Can you find it anywhere, like, in the papers where it's written that he dedicated that particular place? So some people can just, that's why, you see, on this platform, this is a platform of truth. My truth, what I see, anyway, it, it, it doesn't have to be your own truth of what you believe. But at least what I'm saying is going to make sense to you. That someone, and I, I think I have to stress this particular fact, that someone is seeing a particular light to be something like this, doesn't mean that anything that is being said about the person is true. Even though they can be easily identified, is it, it's easy for people to believe that this particular thing ascribed to this person that is seen to be bad is actually true, when that thing might not be true. Just like how, look at right now, in this video right now, mention mentioned Apostle Joshua Salman. There are many people, you see them in the comments, many loyalists that say he's a real man of God, this and this, blah, 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 and they're already feeling hurt of his association with the person of, let's say, Archbishop Duncan Williams and the whole sort situation and all that. So, because it's not someone that has been caught up in many controversies, like many controversies, like the ones that we know for their scandals and all that, it's, it's not easy to ascribe him, it's difficult to ascribe him to something bad or him being this and that. It, it, it's unsettling to a lot of people. That doesn't mean that like, I would not face facts and discuss them exactly how they are. Okay, listen to... Apostle Joshua Selma right now talk about the person of Archbishop Duncan Williams and how powerful he is when it comes to his commanding of territories and all that. This was about 10 months to, let's say, a year ago when he went to the prayer mountain, the same place we discussed about this year that he had to be invited for the prayer breakfast. Let's look at his testimony about Archbishop Duncan Williams. You know a true intercessor by the territorial power an authority they command there were many many other people in the days of Elijah but watch Elijah the intercessor there shall be no rain for a period of three and a half years if it was in our arrogant generation a group of people will come and say don't mind Elijah is he the only one let's pray you think someone did not pray and say Lord let rain come it was as if he was the only man after three and a half years let me tell you how rain came rain did not just come by him saying rain come he did exactly what closed the heavens the bible says he bent over and prayed and lifted his head did it again and he said i see the sign like the fist of a man's hand he saddle your ass and run i hear in my spirit the sound of the abundance of rain intercessors are men of power in the spirit don't mind their weakness physically intercessors are powerful they can literally shift the spiritual climate 
of their assigned territories one intercessor who steps into a territory with understanding when i went to preach for archbishop duncan williams i had an opportunity to go to their prayer mountain where they are building as a platform to intercede for the nations and when i got there i had the opportunity to teach and pray with his major personal intercessors my goodness you think you can pray you meet those guys believe me when i tell you ah no 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 when when those guys you will know that those guys were that's their life oh intercessors they are just giving the burden over nations god can say now congo all they need to do is to drop the prayer request in the middle of them and they will pieces it like you are slicing fish you will just hear that someone is dying someone else is rising there is a control room in the spirit can i tell you this ladies and gentlemen nigeria is not as bad as it is it's a reflection of the absence of strategic intercessors Bishop Duncan Williams. So you see the way he talks about him, the way he extols him as the intercessor and all that. That is how Archbishop Duncan Williams have been seen in the past and all. And that's why people look at him. Oh, okay, Archbishop Duncan Williams is the spiritual father of Paula White. Paula White. You know, with the whole controversy around her. But for me right here, before I try to be in the confines of Africa because if I want to start going into the West right now it's gonna be a whole different ball game entirely so of course TD Jakes with controversies around him you know that I know that that's not my that's not my space but when it comes to this particular accusation on him right now that he dedicated his potter's house to a particular goddess of immorality and all that come on you should sit down and also think yourself look at him talking about the situation himself Look at the particular situation where that particular comment is gotten from. The person that was talking about that, was he talking about, the, he said he mentioned that particular spirit of this. Was he mentioning that particular spirit of asteroids as him rebuking the spirit? Or when he was praying, he mentioned that particular spirit. Because there's a way you could pray and then you see some people talk about every spirit of Baal, every spirit of Jezebel, I rebuke you or that kind of thing. And I see some people peddling some things and I just wonder, how do we think? Have you seen me ha trying to quote and try to stand preacher? Some things are just common sense. So my video that I, the video I played, yes, the video I played before this one, where I was, I showed you an old sermon of Apostle Joshua Sermon. I don't know if you heard the part where he said that some of you have given up your intelligence in the name of spirituality. You want to sound very, I'm sorry, I'm not talking to everyone. I'm talking to some of you like the ones I see in the comments. You want to sound spiritual, but where is your intelligence? Now I'm saying right now confidently that this is a lie against him because of how I'm looking at the scenarios. Can I say that I believe the fact that Archbishop Dr. Williams raised the dead, but he was sitting down there when Juanita Bynum said that he raised the dead. Please. If you are a follower of Archbishop Duncan Williams, has he raised the dead before? Please tell me in the comments, I want to know. Till I see you next time, my name is George. If you have any comments, the comment section is your space. I'm going to see you. Only 